Welcome to Desktop 2020, getting started on your jobs and projects. We're going to go over how to set up your job and also show billable costs, non-billable costs, and be able to track the income off of each job. So we're going to get started first by selecting and adding our customers. So you can add your customer through a drop down here or go to your shortcut bar and select customers. When I'm training, I always use drop down. So we would go to customer and customer center. A customer center is where you hold all the customer information. So you'll notice it also shows the balance that the customer owes as of today. And in here we've got Albert Cruz and we also have Hugh um, that has open jobs with us. So up towards the top it has the new customer or new job. And this is where I want to add a new customer. So if I'm looking at adding Albert Cruz, I can always add him in or edit his information by selecting that pencil. It has four tabs off to the left here which will let you put more information in but the main thing you want to get in especially for invoicing is to have the email so I can email in my invoice and get paid fast. Um, you also have the payment settings so I can set up if they use a, a credit card that they want me to use for this job I can set this credit card up in here. Also, I can set up their sales tax settings. I can put them as taxable or I can get the resale number and keep that in here. The additional information tab is for additional things that you want to track. Now, in adding Albert Cruz, if I'm highlighted on Mr. Cruz, I would go up to the top and select Add a Job. In adding the job, I'm just giving it the name of the job which is kitchen remodel. I can put in the status, what type it is, and my approximate start date. And then in the description I give a little more information. I'm putting in cabinets, countertops, and tile floors. So by doing that it adds a job under Albert Cruz's because he is the gentleman that is going to be paying me or the contractor. Now I want to get ready and just invoice uh, the kitchen remodel up right now and by doing that I can go down to manage transactions and create an invoice or I can go up to the top under new transactions and create an invoice but whatever uh, feels more comfortable to you it's not wrong or right to use either. Alright so in here you have the billable time and costs memo that comes up telling me I've already incurred costs on this job do I want to bill it out and in this case it will open up an option so if you were keeping track of payroll and you were going to rebuild the the customer for the time here's the time tab you've also got an expense tab so this would be miscellaneous expenses I had to go buy that aren't part of the job and then of course mileage and then we're going to go over to the items so there's 13 items I've already paid for I paid for wall framing interior walls uh, building permits lighting most contractors say you know they do a cutoff time so on the ninth of the month they want all of your um, expenses billed to them uh, through an invoice. So we're going to go ahead and select building permits and the electrical. It brings up, it's, I'm actually creating an invoice for the kitchen remodel and the building permit comes up. Remember um, that most of the time you won't put a cost in these because the cost varies so much so you'll know how much the building permit is and the electrical and lighting that they use. Um, again this is an invoice that I have the option to go ahead and email directly to the customer to get paid. Now in creating the invoice it left me with an open balance 
and the total for all of Albert's jobs is the 33,439. So if I just have one job, I may not create multiple jobs underneath that because you can see it's kind of like the parent and all the children. The parents are one I'm actually billing and here's all the jobs under that. There's also a job profitability report and this profitability report shows it per the job and it shows all the costs that I've incurred so far and then the actual revenue. You could see I build uh, $203,000 of these costs. So this is with the markup. I've got a big $200,000 um, invoice that we started off with at the bottom. But towards the right is, you know, the differences of, of the items that I have not billed for revenue. Has a really cool report in here. It's more of a customer summary of how long I've been doing business, their average day of pays. I like this guy, 5.82. I'll take that any day. And then their total sales for the year to date. And then prior years, it will show the amount of jobs that I've done with this uh, customer. I like a certain amount of reports when I'm doing job costing. One is going to reports drop down, go to jobs, time and mileage, and it's called a job profitability summary. So it's just a summary, not a detail of every item, but the summary shows me all my customers and the amount of the actual costs I've spent and the amount I build them, hopefully leaving me a nice profit off to the right here once I get everything built up. The next report I use, still going to the reports, job, time, and mileage, is the profit and loss by job. For me, it's just easier to see. I can uh, clearly see I build out 3289 uh, on the kitchen, 3015 on the cottage for a total of billings that I build them at the 304. It will also populate the cost to give me a net income off of all the different parts of the project. And you'll see the next one is for Shane and Shane's total as well. And then the very last one that I run mainly for my managers or my purchasing agents is that reports job time and mileage and the unbilled costs. So if I'm looking at Heather Campbell's uh, house in the new construction, these are all the unbilled costs for her that I can either determine, well, that is 100% complete. Let's go ahead and bill for the door and trim. This gives um, my billing department and people that say, hey, um, this has been completed. You can go ahead and bill for that and you can run this on a weekly basis. The next thing that we're going to look at is um, how everything kind of works together. So you want to make sure as you go to edit and select preferences that you turn on your jobs and estimates. So are you using estimates? Are you using progress billing? And then you can set up inside of the job if it's pending, awarded, in progress. So this is um, kind of a, a time management on the different um, projects that you can set up and you can change at any time. You know, of course, once it's closed, we change it to closed. And we can even keep track of jobs we didn't get. And we can say it wasn't awarded, um, but we can possibly know next time when we bid a job like that where we were um, too high on. And then making sure your items are set up properly. So we'll go to list, drop down, item list. And each item in here should be set up so that when you are invoicing the customer, it is pointing the right way for your income and your costs. Now this is a contractor that doesn't really hold inventory. So all his items are service items. And on the service item, we've said in this case, building permits that the expense goes to job-related costs. And then when I 
sell it, it goes to construction income for that job. So as long as your items are set up properly, notice again that the costs are at zero and the sale price is at zero because they fluctuate so much. If I put a cost in there, it's then going to give me kind of a skewed cost of maybe what it cost me a year ago. Same with the sale price. With prices changing so much, if I say every time a permit comes through, it's $89 and next week they change it to 95 then I would have this set in here and if I have other people working on the system they might just go ahead and bill it at that lower cost so I want to make sure they go off of the estimate and or the cost of what it really did cost on that permit and then if you are keeping track through here of your employees that are working on the job there's an option here to enter time and in this case, I'm going to enter some for the kitchen remodel for Jen Rand. And they've got uh, 10 hours total on that. And they also have um, for the cottage. And I'm going to add one more, which is for some roof framing for a completely other client. And to the right here is, remember where we looked at a report that was unbilled? So if I select this as billable, meaning I want to bill it back to that customer. Um, if not, I just want to keep track of the costs and I would take those check marks off. But once I put in the time and then go ahead and select if it's billable or not, I want to go ahead and invoice for it. So I'm going to pull up Albert again and it's going to give me the option to select my outstanding items I haven't billed for and in this case my cutoff date was 12-9 so I'm just going to include the payroll for 12-9 on here I'm not going to select the other items this is the only one I want to bill for right now and it will populate his time on that job and I've left it zero here because I may charge people different amounts in this case I'm going to charge um, Albert for 150 per hour on the concrete and I can go ahead again email this invoice off and also how do we get the information in there? So I get a bill from a client I bought tile from and um, possibly some kitchen cabinets. So I put in the bill because I owe this gentleman 14000 here and I'm selecting the items that I'm going to sell which is the cabinets and vanities, the floor coverings and in this case I'm putting the customer Albert cruise in and I'm saying yes I want it to bill back as material costs and this is how it tracks from a bill same thing to go when we're using a check a check is I could just write them the check I don't have a bill and I got some plumbing from them and it's still billed back to the kitchen remodel on this and I want it billable to Albert Again, if you need any personal training, I am more than happy to go through and do some more complicated issues with you on job casting. But again, this is just the easy way to get started.